Quiana. What an honor to follow Wesley Aiken. My goodness, my goodness. Thank you, Wesley, for what you said today. What an inspiration. I always receive much more. You know, some wonder why we come early and sit and wait. We will come to listen and to learn. And what an inspiration you were. All of it, all this morning has been to us. So thank you very much, Wesley, for what you, what your message today it was beautifully, beautifully done. And your discussion of your grandparents, when you say that they were, they were tough, boy, you know they were. You know they were. I know you are as well. So I'm just honored to have been in this room when you spoke today. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Wesley. Soon after I became governor, I was adopted by the Kogwan Tan. So my name also, my Klinkit name is Guchwak. Guchwak means uh, wolf eyes. I'm a member of the Eagle Clan. Lieutenant Governor is a member of the Raven Clan, so they tell us that we're, that we're balanced in that regard. So I'm, I'm very honored to be, be, uh, have been adopted in the, uh, in the Kogwan Tan. You know, last year, I have such a great memory of this event. Um, last year, Chris Apostolgak sat right here and read a speech, a beautiful speech about whaling, about a whale brought in. He was 16 when he brought in the whale. He got a little bit of um, pushback on social media from around the world, and uh, we were pretty d disappointed uh, about that. And so when he read his speech, Lieutenant Governor Malat and I had the honor of sitting on either side of him during that speech. And as a result of that, of what he had to say yesterday as we attended the uh, Governor's Tribal Advisory Council meeting, GTAC, Chris is now a member of GTAC. And to have Chris from, uh, from Gamble sitting on GTAC giving advice and talking about tribal issues was a, was a moment for me. I, I thank Chris for that. <clears throat> Last month, I had the honor of signing Administrative Order 300. Administrative Order 300 is the recognition of the emergency nature of Alaska Native languages. It was a, it was a, it was a result in, from the legislature, past legislation, uh, asking me to do that, and we certainly were happy to do that, but we, didn't, but we wanted to do more. We wanted to make sure that we had in our administration a tribal liaison for each department. So when somebody is talking about an issue with fish and game, we have a tribal liaison in that department and in every department in our, in our uh, uh, administration. So it was an honor to do uh, on the naming of, of, of signs. Uh, we'll now have the, the uh, appropriate indigenous name on signs as well. When we name a, a stream or a mountain or a, a bridge or a river, um, uh, that will be there as well. You know, it was quite a, it was quite a celebration. Uh, but it was, not a, uh, it was not a graduation. It was just another, another step in the direction that uh, we, need to be, we need to be going. You know, a signature does not mean everything has changed. A signature by the governor on an um, administrative order does not mean everything has changed. It means that on the journey that we're on, we've taken another step, and we've taken another step in the right, in the right direction. But it doesn't come with papers and signatures. It comes with attitudes. It comes from, uh, from with the heart and the, and the passion of continuing to do what need, should have been done long ago. This, uh, the Elders and Youth Conference is something I have really uh, grown to admire and respect and what you are doing on the languages is absolutely, absolutely phenomenal. And thank you so much for those that put this together to, to celebrate the languages. And I know that um, uh, my four years uh, serving with Lieutenant Governor Malat I have learned much about the issue of languages, about what Alaska used to be. And back when Wesley's grandparents were here versus what they are today, we have a long ways to go. We really do. But, but we do that by, by doing what we're, what, what, what's happening today. We do that by celebrating the opportunity ahead and, and make, make that difference. When I, when I read that... Um, and signed that administrative order. It was only one day after I had been in Kotzebue for the funeral of Ashley Johnson Barr. And I could not speak. When I got up to speak about this joyous celebration of, 
Um, what we were doing, couldn't do it. It was too soon. You know, I, um, I celebrate all, this, all the great things that happened in Alaska while I'm governor, but I take full responsibility for everything that's bad that happens in Alaska because I'm governor. And I take that very seriously. And so as I sat through that service, the two and a half hours in Cottesville, all I could think of was, what could I have done differently? What could I have done as governor to make sure that hadn't happened? Make sure that never happens again. You know, I, don't, I, couldn't, come up with, I couldn't come up with a single point of, of uh, what could have been done. I know there are things that could be done, that must be done. It's something that um, I don't mean to speak and, and bring any sorrow into this great celebration. But, you know, sometimes um, I can't help it because I feel very, very, very responsible for things that are, that are not happening correctly in, uh, in this great state. You know, Wesley talked about being a, um, uh, a carpenter and a mechanic. You know, I never thought when I was a, uh, we had the janitorial contract in Valdez after the earthquake, when I cleaned toilets after toilet after toilet after school, if anybody had come to me and said, someday you're going to be governor, I would not have believed them. I didn't, I didn't feel that was the possibility. But, you know, it's not about where we start. It's not about what we've had to do through our life. You do what you have to do to, to, um, to put food on the table, whether that is subsistence, whether that is cleaning toilets, whatever it is to do to, get to, to make that to work as a family to survive. And that, that's, what we, that's what we did to survive. And I'm very proud of what we did to survive. It was, it was, um, but as I look at what the, the elders and the, um, uh, and the youth, I just want to say that... Um, I saw, I witnessed something about a month after we were sworn in. I was in Nome for a, um, um, we were in Nome for a inaugural celebration. And afterwards, they, after the, the, the a wonderful evening, they had a great parade, and it was just, it was a phenomenal day in, in Nome. They said, you want to go to the basketball game? The Galena Hawks were playing the, the Nome Nanooks. And we went to the game. I grew up playing basketball, as did, as did Byron. And um, at the beginning of the game, we're on one side in the bleachers. On the, on the far side is the team of the, the Hawks and the Nooks. And each team member um, of the starting five ran across the gym floor and shook hands of an elder that was, that was uh, seated uh, at, uh, on the, uh, the, at, the, at the floor level, the first, first bench seat. And it came down, shook my hand, and, 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 and you know, went back. Each of the, so five, so ten of them did. And I looked at the young people. I looked at the junior high students looking up to those ball players. They would look on their face as they saw that, their heroes coming across, showing respect to elders. That was a moment for me. That was a moment. And I've talked about that ever since. And I've used that as an example that, that you know, uh, showing respect is so incredible. And that, that is what this whole conference is about, is showing respect. Showing from respect from, from the youth to the elders and the elders to the youth. And I just, I just think of that often as far as what the example that was that I saw in, in high school sports. And every chance I get to, uh, in fact, I was just in Galena recently in the gymnasium of the, of the Hawks. I felt very at home there because I've been talking about them ever since for, for the last four years. So, you know, I want to, um, I just want to thank you for what, what all that put this, this, uh, this conference on. It is something that is so meaningful. It is so special. I am, I am very humbled, very honored to be the governor of this, uh, this great state, to stand here with uh, Lieutenant Governor Malat uh, at this time. I'm going to, I will have to leave right afterwards. I'm, I'm late for another engagement, but boy, was I not going to leave early. I was absolutely not going to leave early. Uh, Wesley, again, thank you very much for, for, uh, for your, for your speech. Thank you very much. God bless Alaska. Thank you. Thank you very much. When Wesley was speaking, it reminded me of a recollection that I have of attending Sheldon Jackson High School when it was a high school boarding school. You can leave, Governor. I give you my permission. And it was the first day of uh, 
of school and add a convocation. All of the students were being addressed by, uh, by the head of the school. And I had just been assigned my roommate uh, uh, in my dorm. It was James Nagyak from, from Barrow. And this was a time when many of our homes and our villages uh, were still not heated 24 hours a day. We would have coal or wood fires, and when you went to bed at night, uh, when you woke up in the morning, it was very cold. And you can imagine, even though I'm from southeast Alaska, what it would be like uh, uh, in the North Slope and in other areas of the state in midwinter. <coughs> Anyway, the president of the school, and I was sitting next to James, said, after talking about the rules and everything, he said, uh, and you students, you kids from the rest of the state, and there are almost 300 of us at uh, Sheldon Jackson at that time, he said, you should get to know the kids from the North Slope and learn from them. He said, because their preacher, their minister in Barrow tells me that they are the first to church of any service. They stay there for, for uh, uh, all of the services. They listen, they learn, they're the last to leave. And he said, and the principal of their school tells me that those students, they're the first school in the morning they're the last to leave. They go to every study hall. He said they are so diligent. And James Nagyak leaned up to me and he said, that's because those buildings are the warmest places in town. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember Wesley at that time, a leader and a vigorous leader of the North Slope, a whaling captain. And I'm so honored, Wesley, to have been here to hear you speak this morning. The governor mentioned some of what we have been engaged in in these four years. And I'm going to be brief. I am so honored to be here. All of us are on the land right now of the Denina people. When we travel the state, we are standing and acting upon the lands of some first peoples, some tribal, some native communities land wherever we go. And we respect that. And we must always remember it. It is important to help us as native people stay, stay connected and centered across the state. To be able to have served as a trustee of the First Alaskans Institute will be something that I will forever cherish. To be able to have worked with the Alaska Federation of Natives and the First Alaskans Institute when I was president uh, many years ago, to be able to assume the responsibility on behalf of the Alaska Federation of Natives to host and to be able to, after all of these years, grow this event to what it is today. And the reason that I will cherish it and honor it is because of what is in the room. Elders, youth, together. A sense of shared, not experience, because elders and youth have very different experiences. But you must remember that the elders have shared your experience and one day youth will share that of the elders. And the richness, the spirituality, the transition to a time now, when I mentioned the school story, it was at a time when our elders spoke our languages. But there was in the air, in kind of the society, a belief that we should learn English because that was a language of success. That was a language of the larger society. But deep within us was this belief and spirit 
that who we were would emerge and be strong and live and help guide the whole society. And in that emerging would emerge our languages once again. And it is so something that I had never thought that I would personally experience to see my own grandchildren dancing on the land, doing their native dances, to be able to have materials and others who were experienced and knowledgeable of the language teaching them. And I know we all share that. So I just want to say that what you are experiencing as youth, what the elders are experiencing in working with youth to make all of our lives, to make all of our places more secure, more safe, more respectful, more spiritual, more powerful, is something that we must all cherish and, of course, pass on to our own. Thank you so much.